Welcome to the Odin Automation Essentials demo. In this demo, we will play a few roles, the first of which is that of a system administrator that is going to install Odin Automation Essentials. First, she downloads the Python installer, enters her activation key, and starts the installation process. During the installation process, the installer will retrieve company and contact information from her licensing server, simplifying the configuration process for this service provider. Here you can see that full installation took only nine minutes and the installer also provides a link to the system interface to finish the configuration process. Using the link provided by the installer, the system administrator will open the system interface and finish the configuration of Odin Automation Essentials. To simplify configuration, the installer also automatically creates a subdomain that can be changed later. For this demo, we are using the subdomain Service Pro of the domain useodin.com and this is the way that both the integrated online store and control panel are accessed. Once logged in, the first thing she needs to do is change the administrator's password and review the business and contact information. You can see that the business information was retrieved from our licensing server using the activation key, and the form on this screen was filled in automatically and we are ready to activate our license. Our installation wizard automates many tasks such as configuring the online store, creating service plans for Microsoft CSP services, including product descriptions and retail prices, configuring taxes using the service provider's location, configuring a default payment gateway, and activating the default FOD screening policy. In this demo, our installation wizard has created Office 365 business and enterprise service plans, as well as Exchange Online. Dynamic CRM and Enterprise Mobility Suite are supported as well and will be automatically created in our release version. Now let's switch to a different role and see the online store as a customer would by clicking the Try Out Online Store button. We are going to be a customer named Samantha who owns a small business. She is going to order Office 365 services for herself and her employees and is going to create a new Microsoft account and subdomain under the .onmicrosoft.com domain. She could also register a new domain or use her existing domain for this subscription. The service provider could configure one of 11 different domain plugins included in the system and offer domain registration services with Microsoft CSP services. Odin Automation Essentials also has a software development kit that developers can use to create their own plugins if needed. Samantha is able to use an existing Microsoft account if she has one, but doesn't, so she is going to finish placing her order. As she enters her details to finish the checkout process, the online store will validate her entries in real time to make sure that they will work when they are submitted to Microsoft for tenant creation. This is essential since certain pieces of incorrect information can cause the tenant to not be created successfully, meaning that the service provider will need to contact the customer for correct information before services can be provisioned completely. In this demo, we use the Stripe payment plugin. Our product will come with a payment gateway pre-configured plus eight other payment gateways, but there is also a simple software development kit to create additional plugins if necessary. A very important aspect of Odin Automation Essentials is that the system does not store credit card information. It uses technology called tokenization that allows for recurring charges to be made using a token instead of an actual card number. This is important as it eases the PCI compliance burden of the service provider and also provides an extra layer of security for customers where the database could to become compromised. After Samantha finishes providing all of her company's information and agrees to the terms and conditions of the service provider, she is going to make a payment using the Stripe Payment Gateway. The online store will ask for her credit card number, expiration date, and CVV2 code in order to complete the charge. Once she enters this information and submits it, it should only take a moment for the payment to complete. Now that her payment has been completed, she is presented with a success page that summarizes her order and provides her with a link to the customer control panel. Now she is going to click that link and sign into the customer control panel to finish configuring the services she just purchased. Service provisioning takes a few minutes because it has to wait for the tenant and subscription to be fully created on the Microsoft platform. The system will tell Samantha that the services are still being provisioned if she tries to administer them before they are ready. While this is happening, Samantha will go to the Users tab in order to update her profile. The first thing she wants to do is add a photo of herself to her system user. As you can see, the Customer Control Panel has an easy-to-use interface and updating her photo is a simple task. All tasks that a customer needs to perform in the Customer Control Panel are designed to be intuitive and easy. Once she is done updating her photo, she decides to explore the Account tab. 
In this area of the customer control panel, she can view her past orders and the details of those orders. She can also view and administer her subscriptions, and she can view and, and administer her payment methods, manage her account profile, and also view the action log. At this point, the Office 365 services Samantha ordered are still being provisioned. After three minutes, our Office 365 subscription is ready to use. The control panel provides real-time updates to Samantha in the top right part of the screen. These items are also logged in the action log. On this screen, she could add a custom domain or register a new domain if desired as well. But Samantha wants to assign Office 365 services to her user, so she clicks the Office 365 tab instead. Once there, she can see information about her Microsoft services, such as her Microsoft user ID, linked domains, and license assignment and use. She scrolls down to the user list and clicks the Actions button, then the Assign Services link. The system will show her the licenses she has available, as well as the upsell options for those licenses. She chooses the Office 365 Business Essentials license that she just purchased a few moments ago and clicks the Assign button. The system will now call the Microsoft backend and ask it to assign this license to her user. The seat has now been successfully assigned to Samantha and we can see the license use counter go up. Samantha now clicks on the license tile to see her license assignment and use in detail. Now she wants to add more seats for her employees. She clicks the buy more seats button and adds four more seats of the Office 365 Business Essentials for a total of five seats. With a single click, she places the order for the additional seats using her credit card stored at the Stripe Payment Gateway, and we can see that the payment is successful in real time in the top right and that the new seats have been provisioned. Now she goes back to the Office 365 tab, and we can see the limits have changed. There are now four more seats available to assign to her employees. Samantha is going to add a new user, Emily. She clicks the Add New Users button to begin the process. She then enters Emily's first name, last name, and finally Emily's current email address. Once done, she checks the checkbox to assign Office 365 services to her. On the next screen, Samantha is presented with the license choices available to her as well as the upsell items that are relevant to those licenses. On the Licenses selection screen, Samantha chooses the Business Essentials license and clicks Finish. The current email address that Samantha provided for Emily is used to send an invitation to Emily so that she can be guided through the setup process for her new services. Once Samantha sees that Emily's user has been created successfully by viewing the notifications in the top right corner of the screen, she asks Emily to log into her email and activate her new account. Emily opens a browser in order to go to her email provider's website. Once the site loads, she types in her user info, logs into her email, and opens the email message from Odin Service Automation Essentials. She clicks the activation link as well. From there, she is presented with a screen to configure her password before being able to log in. The system will judge and show password strength during this process. She then provides her email and password and logs into the system. Once she is logged in, she is guided through the activation process in order to create her user. When the page is loaded, she is asked to provide her desired user ID and password. The system will judge and show the password strength for the, during this process as well. After filling in the required information, she clicks Finish and the Odin Automation Essentials system calls Microsoft to create her user and assign her license. While license assignment is quite fast, user creation takes a moment.
Now that her user is created, Emily is going to log into the Office 365 portal using her new Microsoft user ID. She clicks the Login to Office 365 link in the Odin Automation Essentials Control Panel to open the Office 365 portal. Once there, she enters her Office 365 user and password that she just provided a few moments ago and logs in. Once she is logged in, she is presented with the Office 365 dashboard. The first thing she does is click on the mail icon. Once there, she is presented with the setup screen for Exchange Online and needs to choose her language and time zone. After choosing her language and time zone and continuing to her inbox, she decides she needs to send an email to Samantha confirming her services are live. So she clicks on the New button. As she types Samantha's name, Outlook finds Samantha's address for her. She is excited and sends Samantha an email telling her how she is in the cloud now. Now Emily goes back to her control panel and clicks My Profile. She wants to upload her photo to the system just like Samantha did. She clicks her profile, selects her photo, and then confirms the upload. Now let's go back to Samantha. She can see that Emily has updated her photo. Samantha also can see that the number of licenses in use has changed. There are two licenses now in use. She decides to change her password for Office 365, so she clicks the Change Password link. She enters her new password in the Password dialog and presses OK. The system calls Microsoft in the background and changes the password and then adds an alert to the action log. After this, Samantha clicks Log into Office 365. She enters her Microsoft user ID and logs into the Office 365 portal. She then clicks on the mail tile from the dashboard and is presented with the same time zone and language selection screen that Emily was when she accessed her mail earlier. Once she is done choosing language and time zone, she is taken to her inbox and she can see the message that Emily sent her before. At this point, Samantha has successfully created her own account and her employee's account and assigned them services using Odin Automation Essentials and it was easy enough that anyone could do it.